I'm going to go to question number two now. And question number two, learners, was a histogram. And from this histogram, you are asked to draw a cumulative frequency graph. Or another word for cumulative frequency is a ogive. But let's go look at the question. Let's see what they asked us in question number two. Okay, let's see. The histogram below shows the distribution of examination scores for 200 learners. 200 learners, it's very important to know how many learners, that is the value of n. Okay, so there was 200 learners, they gave you this histogram and now they say for 2.1, complete the cumulative frequency table for the above data provided on the diagram sheet. Complete the cumulative frequency table. So I'm going to go to my data sheet. I'm looking for it. Remember this is given to you in the exam. My cumulative frequency data sheet is just, I've got it here. There we go. And I'm going to just ask you to focus on your histogram for me. And I want us to go to the cumulative frequency data sheet. Right. The learners that scored between 30 and 40 was 12. So their frequency there is 12. So the cumulative frequency is 12 as well. Then between 40 and 50, I had 18 learners. And to get the cumulative frequency there, you need to add the 12 plus the 18, which gives you 30. Then between 50 and 60, there were 55 learners. And that gave you 30 plus that 55 is 85. And between 60 and 70, there were 57 learners. 85 plus 57 is 142. So this is quite a good class because look at all the learners that scored between 60 and 70. That's a very good score for a test. Then 142 plus that 43 gives you 185. And I have 185 plus 11 is 196. Where does this 4 come now from again? Where do I get it? I get it from the last block. The learners that scored between 90 and 100. There were only 4 learners. Let's try and get more in this exam. And at the end... I have 200 scores. That is your cumulative frequency table that you have just completed. That's what they asked you. Complete the cumulative frequency table. You have completed it. Just revise again. 12 plus 18. Write that down. 30 plus 55 gives me 85. 85 plus 57 is 142. So I am sure that everybody now can draw up this cumulative frequency graph, cumulative frequency table, sorry, and we are ready to go to question 2.2. What did they ask me in 2.2? So what have we done so far? All we did was to complete the cumulative frequency table by adding the scores. This one plus this one gives me that. Remember you add like that. And now we're ready. After I've done my cumulative frequency table, I am now ready to go and sketch the cumulative frequency graph. Remember, it's also called an ogive. Some people say, say ogive. In Afrikaans is it a ogif. So, that's verskillende manier om dit um, um, te sê, maar ons is besig om dit nou te skets. As ek om skets, kom ons kyk wat ons moet doen. Dit is baie belangrik in die finale examen wat ons gemerk het, het die leerlinge baie punte verloor met hierdie grafiek. They lost a lot of marks with this graph. And I'm going to show you why. Please focus because if you understand this, once again, you can get five marks just for sketching this cumulative frequency graph, which is your ogive. Okay, so here's my cumulative frequency table. There it is. I've got it. Got it there. I've got the 12 there, the 30, and I'm ready to go and sketch it. Everybody, if I can give you a good tip is to go and say, what must I plot? So what must I plot? I must plot my upper level and I must plot it next to 
my cumulative frequency. What must I plot? It's my upper level next to my cumulative frequency. Now the upper level means, just look here everybody, that upper level is the 40 and the 12, the 50 and the 30, the 60 and the 85. You cannot go and plot the lower limit with the cumulative frequency or get the midpoint here. That is all wrong. That is going to give you an incorrect ogive. So let me just say this again. I'm going to emphasize this. I want you to listen because it's sad to see that people get 1 out of 5 for the ogive where they can score 5 out of 5. Come on, pupils. Let's just again see. It's upper. It's 40 and 12. So I am going to plot. I'm going to, you don't need, I'm going to put this one side. It's the 40 and the 12 that you must plot. The 50 and the 30, you go on and you fill it in yourself there. You see if you can get the next one, 60 and 85. That's correct. I knew you had that one because if you get the first two, then the others comes relatively easy. I've got 60 and the 85, the 70 and the 142, the 80 and the 185. And I'm going to plot the 90 and the 11, the 90 and 11, and no, sorry, the 90 and the 196. I bet you got that better than what I did. 90 and 196. And the last score, I think you can all say it by now, it's 100 and 200. Now, remember, your upper level, you're going to plot on your x-axis. And this one, you are going to plot on the y-axis. So I've got those scores. You've worked it out with me. Remember, it's upper level, cumulative frequency. Upper level, cumulative frequency. And we can now go sketch our ogive. People, please, you cannot take the midpoint of your classes. You cannot take the lower level. You are going to get it wrong. It is your upper level together with a cumulative frequency. It is very sad when we mark people sketching lower level, one out of five. Midpoint, one out of five. Everybody, if you see Ogive, I want you to get five out of five for this question. It's upper, put it in your brain here, upper, and my cumulative frequency. So I sketched the Ogive for you already. And here's your Ogive. On this, I can now see I've got my Ogive. Look. It's the 40 with the 12, the 50 with the 30, beautifully plotted. Then I have the 60 with the 85. I've got the 70 was plotted. There's its point, 70 and 142, all accurate there. I've got 80 with 185. The check with me quickly, 80 and 185. Beautiful there. And then the next one is the 90 and the 196. Remember, I almost made a mistake with the 96, 196. I wanted to say 90 and 11. That was wrong. You got it before me. It's 90 and 196. And the last one is 100 and 200. And now comes the most important thing. I've plotted all these points. What to do with these points? You cannot... Listen very carefully. You cannot connect these points with a ruler. If you connect your points with a ruler, say goodbye to that one mark. All these points have to be connected freehand. So come again. Let's look at your frequency table for me quickly. Your frequency, um, oh, your frequency graph, or we call it an ogive. I draw it freehand, and I just did that. All around the points, and you can see... You're getting an S curve. Your shape is in the form of an S. It's free and where does this 30 and the 1 come from? Nobody told me this. I'm going to, where must I get this from? Remember, you must always take your last point down to the X axis. So your first point that you plotted was 40 and 12. You plotted 40 and 12. And now you must just bring it down to the 30. Not to 0, not to the 10, not to the 20. The score directly 
before the 40 is 30 learners, please. That is a mark that you can score. Lots of people lost that mark. It goes down to the x-axis, 30 and 0. And there you have your ogive. Five out of five for drawing this ogive. I hope you understand. It is the cumulative frequency on the y-axis. And the examination scores were on the x-axis. Everybody, I hope you understood that. Let's read our last question on question number 1.3. Just quickly again, learners. For the cumulative frequency graph, it is the upper limit. The upper limit with your cumulative frequency. And then I gave you a nice hint. Before you sketch this cumulative frequency graph, tell yourself, I must plot this one with this one. Draw a little extra column for you. Put your X down, put your Y down before you go and plot. Okay, we're ready to go to our next question. And the next question that they asked me was, I must now estimate how many learners scored 75% or more for the examination. How many learners scored 75% or more for the examination? And they say that I can use my OGIF. I can't go and guess. You can't just say 2 or 10. You need to use the OGIF to see how many learners scored above 75. Remember 75%. How many learners scored above 75%? You need your OGIF for that. So I'm putting my OGIF down. And let's see what you do to answer this question. Okay, so there's your 70. This is my OGIF. Everybody has it in front of them. You know that you're going to plot free and not with a ruler. There's 75. 75 is in between 70 and 80. And all I do is you take a little, you take a line and you just draw a line up to your ogive like I'm doing there now. You can see I've got a broken line there up to the ogive. And now you read what it says on the y-axis. On the y-axis, I get 165. So the 75 took me to my ogive. And then I drew it. To the y-axis, I get here line getrek na die a as to, and dit het vir my 165 gegee. Onthou nou, die vraag was, hoeveel leders het gekry boe 75%? How many learners scored above 75? So what are you going to do? You are going to say that 200 learners wrote this exam, minus 165 is 35 learners scored. 35 learners scored above 75%. 75%. We got onto our OGIVE. We got 165 there. Remember, 165 learners scored below 75. So you have to say 200 minus 165 is 35. I hope you get that sum. 35 learners scored above 75%.